elements of the female reproductive tract. So what we're looking at here is a lateral view of the pelvic viscera. So anteriorly, we've got the bladder. Behind that, we've got the female reproductive system. And then behind that, we've got the rectum and the anal canal. So you can see the location of this reproductive system in relation to the bladder and the digestive system behind it. So the main parts that I'm going to talk about are the ovaries, which are the primary female sex organ. And then you've got the fallopian tubes, or the uterine tubes as they're also known, which connect to the uterus, which is this muscular sac, which is where the embryo develops into a fetus, which develops into a baby. And then you've got the vagina, which opens up in the perineum. So if I just rotate the model around, you can have a look from the anterior aspect so you've got the the uterus which we're looking at here this you can see the superior portion of the uterus which is known as the fundus you've got the fallopian tubes and you've got the ovaries on either side so i've just switched to this model here of an isolated view of the female anatomy so you can see these white oval shaped structures which are the ovaries and as I mentioned before they're the primary sex organs of the female so they are responsible for producing the female sex cells or the egg or the ovum as it's known and this ovum is released monthly and the process of releasing the ovum from the ovary is known as ovulation so the ovaries are actually suspended in the peritoneal cavity by several ligaments and i won't talk about these here but it's important to know that the ovaries are intraperitoneal and they release the egg into the peritoneal cavity and what happens is that the fallopian tube have these finger-like projections distally which are known as fimbriae so you can see these little finger projections coming off the distal end of these tubes which are known as the uterine tubes and these fimbriae are responsible for wafting the egg that's released from the ovary into the tube so the uterine tube has four parts it's got an infundibulum an ampulla an isthmus and an intrauterine part so you've got as I mentioned before, you've got the fimbriae here, and then the wide distal part is known as the infundibulum. And then as we come around, we've got the ampulla, which is the middle and longest part of the uterine tube. And it's the most common site for fertilization of the egg by the male sperm. So that's an important point to remember. And then the medial third of the of the uterine tube is called the isthmus and it's the narrowest part of the tube and it opens up into the uterus so where where the where the fallopian tube opens up into the uterus is called the intrauterine part so that makes sense it's inside the uterus and it opens up into the cavity of the uterus so the uterus is this sac-like structure this hollow organ which has thick muscular walls and as you can see from this lateral view it lies at this kind of angle to the vagina so coming back to this model you can see the bladder sitting anteriorly to it and the uterus is flexed above it so there are three parts to the uterus You've got the dome-shaped superior part of the uterus, which is called the fundus. And this part of the uterus lies superiorly to the point where the uterine tubes enter into the uterus. And then you've got the bulk of the uterus, which is known as the body. And this is the main part of the uterus. And then inferiorly, you've got the cervix of the uterus. So the cervix is the neck of the uterus. So remember in the, the vertebrae, you've got the cervical vertebrae. So it just refers to the vertebrae which are in the neck. So cervix means neck. So the neck of the uterus protrudes into the vagina inferiorly. So you've got the fundus, the body and the cervix. So I've just switched over to a, a simple cross-section of the uterus. 
and I just wanted to show you the cervical portion, the cervix of the uterus. So I've outlined it in green and it's this narrow inferior portion. And where it opens up into the vagina, it's called the external arse. So you've got this external opening into the vagina. And where it opens up into the uterine cavity above, it's called the internal arse. So I've just come over to this nice cross-sectional model. And what I want to show you here is the way that the dome-shaped cervix protrudes into the vagina. So you can see this protrusion here. So by protruding into the vagina in this way, the cervix creates recesses around it. So anteriorly, you've got this recess here, and posteriorly, you've got this recess here, where the cervix meets the um, vaginal wall. So you've got these pockets around the vagina, and these are known as the fornix. So you've got an anterior fornix anteriorly, a posterior fornix behind, and you've got two lateral fornices. So in terms of the layers of the uterus, you've got an outer connective tissue layer, which is called the perimetrium. So I'm drawing this on in red here. And then as you can see from this cross section, you've got a thick uh, middle layer of muscle. And this is smooth muscle and it's important during labour for this smooth muscle to contract. And then lining the cavity of the uterus, you've got the endometrium. So you've got the endometrium here. The muscle layer, I forgot to mention, is called the myometrium. And then, like I mentioned before, you've got the perimetrium, which is the outer connective tissue um, covering. So the endometrium, which is the internal mucosal layer, is interesting because it thickens during the menstrual cycle and it disintegrates um, at the onset of menstruation. So it's under hormonal influence. So it varies in thickness during the menstrual cycle. So the lower part of the rep female reproductive tract is the vagina. And this is a fibromuscular tube. And as you can see, it lies anterior to the rectum and the anal canal, and it lies behind the bladder. So you can see the bladder here and the urethra here. So those are the anatomical relationships. So the vagina runs between the external vaginal orifice up to the cervix, to the external os of the cervix. And this internal end of the vagina is known as the vaginal vault. And just like the, the uterus, the vagina has three layers. You've got the outer connective tissue layer, the middle muscular layer, and you've got the internal mucosa. So rotating this model round, you can see that the pelvic cavity is lined by this flat sheet of peritoneum, which is continuous with the peritoneum from the abdominal cavity above. And this peritoneum, which sort of drapes over these pelvic viscera, is known as the broad ligament. And you've got various other ligaments attaching to the uterus and attaching to the ovaries, which carry vessels and support the viscera structurally. And I won't talk about these now, but it's important to be aware of this flat sheet of peritoneum, which is draped over the viscera, and it's called the broad ligament. And this sheet of ligament which is draped over these organs forms various pouches so for instance anteriorly you've got this little pouch here called the vesico uterine pouch and posteriorly you can see how this pouch forms behind the superior end of the vagina and behind the uterus and this is called the recto uterine pouch or the pouch of douglas so just to be aware that this peritoneum drapes over the uterus and you can see the intraperitoneal ovary here. So that's a brief introduction to some of the elements of the female reproductive